Hey guys, so I'm going to be running through how to set up the basic effect that can be used to apply a screen splatter effect. Now to start off we're only using two pretty simple elements. We've got ourselves these two blood splatters that you can see here. We have blood splatter 1, which is a really simple blood texture with an alpha to give it this transparency. And then we have blood splatter 2, which again looks like this. Now, one thing I just want to point out with these two textures is that I have set the load group to be UI because we want to get these at the highest possible quality. I've set them as 512 uh, by 512. You can, you can experiment with this, um, but I wanted them relatively high resolution so that when we spray them across the player's screen, they get something decent. Now, first up, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration about uh, with, with what we're intending to do in the long run. It's going to look something along the lines of this. So these guys just kind of splat up on your HUD whenever you get shot. So at the moment I'm spawning through console, but we'll set them up properly in game. So here's where we begin. At the moment I have a simple thing called PG Blood Tutorial and Texture Group called Splats. I'm going to create a new material, and I'm going to call this uh, Splat Master because I'm going to be creating this as a master material to be applied to all blood splatters across the board. So I'm going to put it in the group called splats and I'm going to call this m for material underscore splat master underscore zero one. Really simple. Hit OK and just going to put it into the correct screen. We now have this rocket. Okay so to begin with I'm going to want to start working with the very basics. So I'm going to focus on just one texture and we'll work the rest of it out from there. So I'm going to click on him, hold down T and click and this adds our texture sample. Now you'll notice we get some strange artifacting going on. That's just due to how PNG compression works with uh, Unreal. If I get rid of the alpha you can see it there. It's kind of nasty. But the final effect is good and that's what we care about. So I'm going to set this up really simply. I'm going to plug the black into emissive. I'm going to plug the white into opacity and now I'm going to go down here and set the blend mode to translucent. You can now see that we've got this coming out pretty well over here. And I'm going to set the lighting mode to unlit since since this is always kind of being sprayed onto the screen, I don't actually care too much about um, about what's going on with regards to the lighting. So that's our first step. Now this is going to ultimately be what we call a master material. So I'm actually going to right click on this and hit convert to parameter. And I'm going to rename this to uh, Blood Diffuse. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so we've got ourselves that. He's plugged in nice in there. So, in theory, we could actually work with just this to begin with. But because I'm a bit of a uh, perfectionist when it comes to this stuff, I'm actually going to just add a few little extra elements in there to get it looking nice. So, first up is I'm going to bring in what we call Vertex Color. Now, vertex color is used to control a material in a very si simple and easy way through uh, Cascade, which is the particle system. So what I'm actually going to be using here is, is anything that is the color of a life node within Cascade can be used to modify this black area up here, or the red, green, and blue channels. And anything that is in the alpha channel in Cascade can then be output from this white node just here. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this is a really good place for us to start. I can get this and I can multiply these variables. So if I plug the black into the black into emissive, that now gives out the red, green and blue channels and multiplies them by the red, green and blue channels. If I do the same thing with the alpha and multiply those alphas by this, we now have the ability to fade the texture in and out because in theory if this vertex color was equal to zero that would be zero times the alpha here which would also equal zero. So we can give it a nice fade and I'll show you that in Cascade later. Now the next part is is that if this was to fill up our screen looking like this, um, you know that was cool in the 90s I guess but we, c we can do better. Let's face facts. So what I'm actually going to start doing is I'm going to look at bringing in just a little bit of distortion and some cool looking effects just to kind of get the whole way with this. So how I'm going to go about doing that is I'm going to I'm going to bring in a noise texture and run that into a material function. So if I go to here, I click textures, all assets, and I type in the word noise. We've got a couple that are floating around. I'm going to use this UDK cloud noise because he's pretty rough and that looks like what we'd be wanting. 
so I've clicked on him I've gone back to here and I've right clicked and I've punched in um, texture use new texture object and now I'm going to click there and you'll see that we've now got this as a texture object now I need to stress a texture object and a texture sample are two different things all right one of these things is not like the other so we've got him in there and if I was to just plug this in we've got material functions over here now the material function I want to look for is called four-way motion chaos this is one of the best kept secrets in Unreal I don't know why this isn't like celebrated yearly with festivals this thing makes my life infinitely easier I'm gonna plug him into texture 2D and in theory if I was to right click on this and hit preview node on mesh this is what it actually does so if you're paying attention what it actually does is it gets this texture and overlays it four times and just sends them in random directions which gives us this nice cloudy look this is what we're going to use as our primary distortion on the overall effect so he's in there and now I'm going to go from here and I'm going to first up is I'm going to keep this on preview node on mesh because this is the distortion I'm going to bring in what we call a scalar parameter so in the same way that this is a texture parameter I'm going to bring in something that is a really simple value that's easy to change and uh, to do that I hold down S and I left click you can also select it from up here if you're you know boring so I'm going to plug that into there you'll notice that by just plugging that straight into there everything over here stopped now the reason that stopped is because this value by default is zero so first off I'm going to rename this object to be blood pulse speed because that's a good enough name for now speed and I'm going to set the value to I'm thinking 0.2 you'll notice that we now have those clouds moving again but they're, they're much more subtle, much, much more subtle. So with that in mind, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to step back and I'm going to increase the uh, the contrast. Now one of the quickest ways to increase the contrast in something is to times it by itself. And the reason this works is because 0.5 times 0.5 is equal to 0.25, whereas 1 times 1 is equal to 1. What this means is that the values as they get darker and lighter separate and push themselves towards pure dark or pure light as we uh, multiply them by themselves. So I'm going to connect him to base um, and then I'm going to add a constant. Now to add this constant uh, you could set it up as a scalar parameter like we did before but in this case I don't think it'll be necessary so I'm just going to hold down one and click. This lets us add a single constant value. I plug him into there and I'm going to set him to two. And now if I go to here You'll see that we now have this much, this uh, much you know, stronger contrast. If, if in theory, if I was pushed up to four or five, you can see that we're, you know, it pushes it even further. But for the time being, uh, my gut is telling me that two is going to work. Well, my gut and the fact that I practiced this before we did the tutorial, they're equal parts. So next up is actually um, kind of working this in a bit further. We've got, uh, we now want to actually start working this alpha over here and instead of plugging it directly into the multiply up here we um, we actually want to go about this in a slightly different way we actually want to get this alpha and multiply him against the distortion factor so to do that what I do is I go alpha multiply and I'm gonna be running let me think about the quickest way to do this is yeah this will work okay if I run this I'm actually just going to delete this for the time being. Um, uh, yep. So I'm going to drag this into multiply, which is the vertex colors alpha, and I'm going to create a new scalar, which is going to be called blood pulse strength. So again, I hold down S, I left click. We've got this dude that's just been created. So I go blood pulse strength. I hit enter, and I run him into the multiply, right? So we're now timesing the alpha here against the blood pulse strength value here. Now, I probably want this to be, I guess it's around 20. And now from here, I'm gonna multiply this against our contrasted values, which are over here. So if I plug this into this, and I preview this node, you now see that these values have been times by up to 20 if they were pure white. So let's get this nice, you know, right here. So from here I'm going to work it in a slightly different way and that is that uh, whenever you use effects like this and you run them into your opacity channel or your distortion channel um, they tend to cry when you uh, you go with values that are above 1 or below 0. So we're going to use what we call a constant clamp. 
Now how a constant clamp works is it grabs any values that are below a given uh, value and any numbers that are above a given value and it pretty much cuts them off. So if I was to have a constant clamp that had values of a min of 0 and a max of 1, when I run this into here, any numbers that are above 1 are now going to be equal to 1. Any numbers that are below 0 are going to be equal to 0. You can see why this could be useful. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to multiply it against the alpha that we have here. I'm going to get rid of that for a second. So if I actually preview that, you can see that that clamped out those values. So I'm going to multiply the constant clamp against the alpha. And if I go multiply, if I preview the multiply and you'll look at this, you can now see the slight pulsing coming in on those areas. This gives us a really nice little blood effect. So if I was to now run that multiply into just thinking. If I was to run that multiply straight into my opacity, we should be good. So I'm going to plug him in. I'm going to stop previewing. And if you pay careful attention here, you can see that my blood now looks like it's kind of oozing. So we've got this nice little effect. And again, this is going to look significantly better when there's blood spraying everywhere, but this is a good start. So with that in mind, I'm now going to work off of the next part, which is um, I'm basically going to get the... I'm going to set up a distortion layer. So... Now, look, there are plenty of ways you could do this. Uh, since we're just trying to get something that looks good quickly, I'm just going to go with a really um, kind of dirty thing of getting the four-way motion chaos that we're already using, multiplying it against the alpha channel of the blood. And if I was to preview this, it would look like this. And then I'm going to run that into a multiply, which is the distortion amount. So I'm going to multiply... Uh, hold down S, add a scalar, and I'm going to call this distortion amount. There we go, what up? And distortion amount I'm going to set to like, I don't know, 5 sounds good. Plug you in. And distortion amount is... just then thread straight into the distortion level. So now if I go stop preview node... Now this is tricky to see if you're not looking for it, but if you look at these straight lines in the background, you'll notice that as they pass through the blood, they're actually now being warped. Look at this little spot over here. You can see in the center of it that line's getting warped. This is a slow moving distortion that's pretty much just getting offset according to wherever those, uh, those uh, blood pulses happen to be. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call this material good enough for the time being. There's plenty of other things we could work on, but you know what? That should be enough to, uh, to function from here. So I'm going to hit check. And the one thing I'm going to do really quickly, just before we move on, is I'm going to get this material, which looks reasonably good, and I'm actually going to create an exact copy of it that uses a different blood. So I right-click on it, and I hit Create New Material Instance Constant, and I'm going to call this blood splat underscore inst 02. Inst is for instance, and I hit OK. Now this is... Uh, this is using material instances here. This is a really useful little technique. Now what this basically does is this runs the exact same shader I had before, but with any changes that I request. So I click on here, and I check this box to say, yes, this is being modified in the instance. Now all I have to do is click here, and we now have a very similar real-time preview. You can see that we've now got a similar type of blood splatter effect going on with those little pulses happening, giving it a little look of randomness, while at the same time creating uh, what appears to be an entirely new type of blood. And all it took was two clicks. Ain't that cool? So now with those in mind, we're going to move on to the actual uh, setting up the emitter in part two of this tutorial.